May 3, 2017, Honolulu, Hawaii. Jennifer Apple, an experienced sailor, along with her partner Natasha Fueva, set sail to Tahiti, a journey of over 2,600 miles. It will take them around three weeks to complete this distance. They have been planning this trip for over a year now, and finally, the day has arrived. With enough food to last for five months and two beloved dogs named Valentine and Zeus, they embark on an expedition that was going to change their lives forever. Their very first night into the journey, they got into a Force 11 storm. If you are not familiar with this term, then let me break it down to you. According to the Beaufort scale, Force 11 would be an extremely violent storm with 70 miles per hour wind speed with 30 feet high waves. To imagine this, you can try sticking out your hand out of the window the next time when you are on a highway. Anything stronger than Force 11, also known as Force 12, would be considered a hurricane. But how did a tiny 50 feet boat survive during such a powerful disaster that lasted for the next three days? I would say sheer luck. With exceptionally dangerous waves created by high-speed wind, they lost total control over their boat. The Sea Nymph, a rather fitting name to describe their urge to explore the gigantic sea, their best chance of surviving was to stay below deck and hold on to anything sturdy, because with very large amounts of airborne spray almost blinding them, not to mention strong waves that completely overpowered their boat, it was useless to steer the boat in any direction. This was made even more difficult considering the conditions are even worse at night, making it enough to create an adrenaline rush through your body with your heart pounding out of your chest. But in case you want to survive, you wouldn't have time to be apprehensive. Miraculously, they survived the three days long storm, but of course, not without a serious complication that would further push them towards a life-threatening situation, their boat was compromised. You see, these conditions were not particularly merciful to their boat, and it was almost impossible to think that they would have gotten through it without any damage. The boat holding the spreader to the root column at the mass bent, and they soon realized that it was starting to shake. At this point, they were 18 hours away from their starting spot. Now, these are serious enough circumstances to make anyone halt their journey immediately and head back considering they were merely a day away from Hawaii. But why didn't they? Well, surviving a Force 11 storm kind of lifted their spirits thinking that if they can withstand such extreme conditions, then they can certainly reach their next stop, Christmas Island, Kiribati, where the boat was to be repaired. The Kiribati Island is a receded volcanic mountain in the middle of the deep Pacific Ocean, and there is always an entrance. The boats enter or exit the island during high tide, and it's an extremely protected anchorage. With one broken spreader, they managed to reach the island on May 17th, but soon realized that their boat was too big to get through their gateway, and hence, they were unable to anchor at the harbor. During these desperate times, they decided to continue heading towards south in an attempt to reach the northern Cooks Island, a little over 100 miles north of the port of entry, Penryn. After that, the sea nymph would then bound for Honolulu, but the forces of nature weren't going to let them win just yet. Because at this point, their boat only could go four knots and they were headed in the east direction while they entered an area where they were hit by a 10 knot current in the opposite direction. Instead of going forward, they were moving backwards. By the time they figured this out, they were truly stranded and once again, the uncertainties of the great Pacific Ocean crushed their hopes, and they found themselves in the midst of another storm, only this time it was stronger and more brutal as compared to the Storm 11 that they had previously endured during their first night of their journey. With winds of about 100 to 150 miles an hour generating waves as high as 40 feet, one can barely imagine the absolute horror they must have seen in such a tight situation where one mistake could lead to a confirmed death. With water coming from every direction, the storm had dropped an ample amount of water that flooded the ignition. Until now, they were navigating their way through the boat's motor engine, since the first storm had already broken the spreader. 
But now, with the flooded ignition, their motor engine malfunctioned, and their boat started to steer helplessly in the open sea, making the Pacific Ocean a war zone for the next five months, with each day hosting a new challenge, thus trimming their chances of survival. To add insult to injury, all their communication devices either malfunctioned or lost overboard. Right after they survived the second storm, to their distress, they got pushed into an area called the Devil's Triangle, a zone cramped with tiger sharks. Tiger sharks are big creatures. If one is under attack, it is highly unlikely that the person would survive. But being on the boat gave Jennifer and Natasha the upper hand. Apple recalls this incident as her worst nightmare coming to life. Because the sharks slowly grew impatient and they were maneuvering through their region. This kept going on for more than a week, with these tiger sharks taunting the poor ladies, and often performing extremely calculated attacks. At one point, the sharks were a mere six inches away from Jennifer while circling the boat. Both were extremely lucky that the outer surface of their boat was strong enough to withstand those fetal attacks, with an encompassing circle of sharks surrounding them. The 45 feet long boat must have felt small and exhausting. Throughout the entirety of their trial, they did hail several different ships that passed by them within their vicinity. Despite their desperate attempts to signal those ships using whatever tactics available at their disposal, the attempts failed and could not gain them their freedom. This resulted in utter hopelessness, and they became increasingly depressed with each passing day, as help was coming from nowhere. In a fortunate coincidence, Jennifer Apple and Tasha Fueva had exactly enough food and supplies to last them and their dogs to survive for at least five months. But it got to a close call when the pair discovered that they were utilizing their food supplies at a much faster pace. Although they had plenty for them, the dog food soon ran out and they had to feed them on human food. They never really had any water problems because they brought a water purifier with themselves. Despite the problems, the pair said there were positive moments, such as when they fixed their broken water purifier and used their long days adrift to learn more about the sea and the weather. Then finally, nearly five months later, on October 24, Taiwanese fishermen spotted sea nymph drifting almost 900 miles off Japan. Its crew brought the vessel under tow. Little did they know, they were damaging their boat. But the question is, why? Well, the answer to that question is straightforward. Jennifer and Tasha could not communicate with the rescuers due to the language barrier. They felt like they could not trust the Taiwanese fishermen. After five hauling months at sea, they were very insecure. The rescuers did not seem friendly, and the girls weren't sure if they had the intention to save or harm them. Fearing for her life, Jennifer decided to ask the ship's captain if she could use their radio to which he said yes. With a boat constantly being damaged by towing, she had to take her chances. As none of the crew spoke English, she mustered up enough courage to notify the Coast Guard via the transmission radio. Finally, on the very next morning, USS Ashland, a Navy ship, arrived at the said location. A small crew of sailors was deployed to the Sea Nymph, and both Jennifer and Natasha, along with their two dogs, were rescued and brought back to the Navy ship. At one point, however, Jennifer thought that the Navy ship had passed right in front of them, leaving them both behind. But they were relieved to know that it was just a standard procedure. The Sea Nymph, on which they were adrift in the Pacific for five months, is now floating abandoned somewhere off the coast of Asia. One might think that after enduring all these hardships under lethal conditions, they might succumb to post-traumatic stress disorder and wish to remain silent on their experience. But three weeks after being plucked from the middle of the ocean by the Navy vessel, Jennifer Apple and Tasha Fueva say they wish they could just go back to sea. But their story does not end here. The pair stirred a lot of controversy among other sailors and lovers of the ocean with their stories of huge storms and giant sharks attacks, and a lot of their claims were pointed out to be false by individual experts. For example, Apple claimed that all their tools for communication either broke or malfunctioned during the storms, which are highly unlikely according to the sailing community. 
When asked why during this course of time did they not activate the EPIRB, a device that allows you to be in range if you are within 5,000 miles of the equator, which covers up to 70% of the Earth. She simply responded that they never felt truly in distress or that they were going to die. There were also reports that the Coast Guard made contact with a vessel called Sea Nymph in June near Tahiti, but the answering skipper did not show any hints of distress. Instead, the captain assured them that they were to land in Tahiti the very next day. Their claims of enduring huge storms were deemed to be falsified, as no such storms and strong winds were reported in the weather during those days. This also rose a lot of eyebrows towards their boat, considering it was truly rendered immobile. Furthermore, it has been supported by several scientists that tiger sharks are solitary, and only a few of them hunt in packs. Also, they do not teach their children to hunt, instead, they just lay eggs and leave. During one interview, annoyed and enraged, Jennifer Apple claimed that they were never really stranded, and all the fuss is just a matter of bad press. Regardless of all the speculations and controversies surrounding this story, we cannot ignore the horrors stated by Jennifer and Fuiva. They might or might not have happened to them, but they can certainly happen to anyone sailing the sea. So, next time when you decide to embark on such a journey, be prepared for the uncertainties that the wild and vast ocean have to offer. What do you think about Jennifer and Tasha's story? Were they credible or fabricated? Let us know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video, please remember to click the like, subscribe, and notification bell to stay tuned for the next visual story.